Well, today, people will get a look at Apple's newest products. The event will take place at Apple Park. That's the company's new spaceship campus in Cupertino, California. They are expected to reveal a newly designed iPhone and possibly a new Apple TV and smartwatch. So here to discuss it is Dan Ackerman. He is the section editor at CNET. What's up? Hey, what's going on? So, what do you think we'll see today? Some of those? I think we're going to see all that stuff because really? there have been a ton of leaks about this. Apple usually keeps everything close to the vest. Pretty much everything leaked out this time, including three phones, uh, an iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, the things that kind of look like the 7s you have now, right. and the special 10th anniversary edition they're going to call the iPhone X. They may pronounce it iPhone 10, but it's iPhone and X. Okay. What is, what's the difference between that and the, and the 8? This is going to be the super premium model that takes that screen and puts it across the entire front face of the phone. Kind of like you see in some of the Samsung phones. No bezel on the uh, bottom, very minimal on top, and just edge to edge. No room for a home button anymore, so, so no more home button. It's funny. It seems to me like it's like the equivalent of making a amplifier to 11. Why not just have the newest and the best Apple product be that device, not oh, yeah. like an 8 and then also like an 11 Apple they're gonna, You know what? Because they're <laughs> going to charge a lot more for this one. They say it's going to be $1,000, which, which is crazy for a phone. So yeah. you can still get the regular iPhone 8, you know, if you just want to spend the regular $750 <laughs> instead of the $1,000. What about the Apple TV? I just bought a new Apple TV, Apple TV 4. Bad timing. Bad timing. I know, man. I always, uh, I'm terrible at this stuff. You should read our site. We I, should tell you, don't buy stuff. <laughs> uh, I think they're going to add 4K support to it, which is important because even budget TVs now are 4K TVs. So everyone has it. You might as well support 4K streams. So okay. things like you know Netflix and Amazon and, and Apple's movies. But what else? That's that makes the, it yeah. like. I mean, is it just that? Because I, I think can they're going to call it iPhone. <laughs> I, I mean, Apple TV 4K. So that I think that's the main thing because they did a huge upgrade the other year where they gave it the remote control and the games and stuff. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the iPhone specifically, the iPhone 8. Um, what will be different? I mean, you. what will be different than what we have already on the iPhone 7? You know, the big things they're probably going to add are wireless charging. That may come to all three phones ah. where you put it down on the little pan to charge uh, versus plugging it in. And Samsung and other phones have had that for a long time. It's kind of catch up for Apple. Yep. And of course, on the iPhone X model, that bigger screen, and because you're losing that home button, facial recognition. We've actually seen the, the login screens for that leak already, how it looks when you when you set up your face for it. It's kind of like the thumbprint sensor, except you just look at it and it logs you in. How important will the launch of the new iPhone be for Apple's bottom line? Because for many people, it feels as if they were early adopters of Apple products, and because of that, some people have been reluctant to switch to the Android devices, uh, including myself. So I'm just talking, I, I know that I'm not the in the minority here. There are a lot of people who say, look, I've got all my stuff in the cloud. I mean, I'm just so tied to the Apple products. But it feels as if there's a tipping point where people say, look, the Android devices just for a lot of people seem much more intuitive, easier to use, better, faster, yeah. whatever. And so. more forward looking in terms of design. And exactly. that's what happened last year and this year. Samsung could have really run away with it last year with the Note 7, which everyone said was a fantastic phone if they didn't start catching on fire. Right. That, that gave bad. Apple another year bad. to catch up. <laughs> yeah, totally bad. And now they've kind of caught up with all those design things. And like you said, you have an Apple TV, maybe you have an iPhone. You get caught in that ecosystem. It's tough to get away unless someone else has something really, really compelling that Apple doesn't have. It's interesting. I, I was thinking about this as I was walking past an Apple store the other day, how when Steve Jobs introduced the iPod, I've always been an early adopter of the, the early Apple products, and I remember it, a part of the allure to it was that it provided freedom, right? You had the freedom to carry around your entire music collection with you wherever you went, whether you were abroad or just even like going to work, and yet now, decades later, we are not really free. We're so tied to the ecosystem that is Apple. They call it the walled garden, and it's a the pleasant prison, but you're basically, yeah, you're, you're locked into one ecosystem, and that's where people like Spotify come in, and they say, oh, we'll work on any device, and you can use us instead of, you know, iTunes or whatever you're using, uh, and people use things like that, like Netflix, to kind of break out of that walled garden a little bit, but you're still in it. You're still in it. Well, we'll see how much more we're in it after the announcement this afternoon. Dan Ackerman, as always, from CNET, we appreciate it. Thank you.